Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chumi. I make videos every week to add value to you. I was feeling particularly chatty today, so I've got myself a cup of tea and I wanted to talk about some of the things that I've been reflecting in the last few weeks. Um, go ahead and feel free to pause this video and grab yourself a drink and I'll wait for you. One of the things that I've been thinking about recently is some of the biggest regrets in my life. I'm not usually one to regret. I don't take decisions or actions that I will regret in the future because I usually sit and think of all of the pros and cons. I plan everything and then I make a decision. But you know sometimes certain things are beyond your control and then it happens and a few years down the road you think, I should have done that differently. One of the things that I regret is that I wasn't old enough when I was younger. I have been a very timid child. Um, while I was growing up, I've been very cautious about a lot of things. I'm the kind who would let my cousins do something first, watch them do it, learn from them, and then I'll do that. I'm not particularly adventurous myself. I don't um, attempt to do anything on my own, as in I don't take the first move or the first step. I feel like when I was younger, there was probably a lot more opportunity to do many different things, but I didn't just because I dare not take the first step or just because I dare not do anything out of the ordinary for me. I've been so used to my own routine, I've been so used to my own ways of life. Not intentional, but I was just so narrow-minded and so fixed to what I'm used to. Maybe it was just my generation when I was growing up, or maybe it was just me. When I look at kids these days, they know so much more than I did when I was their age. Some of my friends' children, or even my nieces and nephews, and I, I keep thinking about the way they talk, the way they reason things, and some of the decisions that they make. I've never known myself to do that. Number one, I wouldn't dare say anything against my elders. Number two, I wouldn't have even had that thought to think like how they think. I don't know if it's because of kids this generation. They're just a lot more exposed to things. There's a lot more options for them to be more outspoken than I was at my time. But then again, I think it's unfair to blame it on the generation. See, let me give you an example. Now that I've started YouTube, I'm a lot more connected with other people, as in I watch a lot more videos from other people. I've been looking at their history, when they started, um, you know, how they've grown, how they've learned everything that they have. YouTube is about 10 years old now. And a lot of people that I follow are the ones who started YouTube like 10 years, 7 years ago. Or whenever YouTube was still new. At the time, not many people really relied on YouTube. Now, I don't know what I would do without YouTube or without Google and I don't even remember how it was in my childhood when I had to learn something without YouTube or without Google. So these people who started that many years ago are probably from my generation. They, they were about my age at that time or they are rather my age now. So when they started YouTube, I was about the same age as them. They had the guts to do things which is out of the ordinary. It's not normal for them to do that. They've not seen anyone else. They were pioneers in it. And they were willing to do that. And that's one of my biggest regrets. Why wasn't I able to pioneer anything? Why wasn't I able to start or try doing something? Come to think of it, if I had started these things before, I would have been more confident or maybe bolder in something. I've never really been a long-term planner. I never really made goals for five years or 10 years. I don't remember, for some reason, I never grew up with that question at all. What do you want to be in five years time or what do you want to do in 10 years time? I always thought about short-term goals and short-term plans. For example, if it were to be a government exam that year, if I were to have a major exam that year, then that is my goal. I want to do this exam. Maybe I had ambitions, yes, but I didn't have anything else out of the regular stereotype. And that's one of my biggest regrets. Just because I wasn't bold enough to think outside the box, just because I wasn't bold enough to explore something beyond the ordinary that I've seen from my day-to-day -day living and from what I've seen from my cousins or my family members' experience or, you know, even friends' experiences. Just in my small circle, I never really explored that side of the world at all. I feel like if I had started these things 10 years ago, I would have been in an entirely different place today. That's not to say that you are too late now in starting whatever you want to start. Age is but a number. You can start at any time you have that realization that you want to. When I first moved to the UK 12 years ago, 
there were so many opportunities or even possibilities that I could have explored which I didn't. Another big regret that I have is that I never really looked at things as an investment. I always tried to save money rather than spend it to make things easier for me. Let me explain. I first moved to UK about 12 years ago as a student. When I was a student, naturally money was tight. I wasn't even working throughout my um, uni days, as in I finished all of my studies, I focused solely on my studies, never really did anything else, never went out for work, nothing. Not even a part-time job. So. Uh, my mother was obviously funding me for everything and I was trying to be really, really stingy and save money because the exchange rate between Malaysia and UK at that time was really, really high. So I didn't want to spend as much money at all because we were paying everything. I didn't have a scholarship, I didn't have a loan that I needed to pay back, nothing else. And I was thinking, at that time, I struggled a lot. When I was a student, I needed a lot of basic um, household stuff. I needed a lot of basic things that could have helped me with studying, that could have helped me with general life, basically, just to make life better for me. Instead, what I did was, I was just trying to save money everywhere possible. One simple thing is, um, I'm thinking of this now, so I use it as an example. It's a bigger screen, a bigger monitor. I've seen a few people, a few students on YouTube now talk about the benefits of a big screen and I see the benefit of it now. When I was a student, I had my laptop and I always had like either a 13 inch or a 15 inch laptop, nothing bigger than that because I couldn't really carry heavy stuff and I wanted something which was lighter and sleeker. When you're doing work with your laptop, you need to have so many pages open. You have to have your journals, you need to look at some other websites, you have to look at drawings and do a lot of other things on it, you need to type. So it's like multiple things that you're doing, you need multiple screens for all that. And that's one thing that I struggled. It didn't occur to me to buy another monitor at that time, to even consider another monitor. But that's just an example. If you were to buy something which benefits you in the long run, which saves you time and enables you to be far more productive, then that is an investment. It's not luxurious things. It's not extra things that you just want to be fancy. But those are things that you need to make life easier for you to make life more convenient for you to be able to be productive, to be able to achieve more and do more. Another thing that I could have invested in would have been a good pair of shoes. Not just any ordinary shoes, but the one that gives you back support. When I was younger, I used to wear heels a lot. Because I'm short, I wanted to look taller, so I wore heels. As a result, I spoiled my back. I can't wear heels anymore now. I can't even stand for more than 20 minutes now, uh, even if I'm not wearing heels. And I used to walk a lot when I was a student. You know, when you're a student, you don't really have your own transport. You're living away from home. You're independent. You're relying on public transport. You're just walking everywhere. So I used to walk a lot when I was a student. And that kind of made it even worse. Um, there's this good pair of shoes that was recommended to me. It was rather expensive. Not that anyone said no. I just don't want to spend that money. I didn't think that it would have been beneficial for me to spend the money on the shoes. I thought it would have been better for me to save the money for, you know, either my travels or to go back to Malaysia. Save the money. I don't need to spend it. I don't need anything else at all. I was just really, really stingy when I was younger. While I was trying to save as much money as possible, I had another flatmate who was spending as much money as possible just to make life comfortable and convenient for her. She went beyond necessary. She bought a lot of things just because she wanted to buy. In my opinion, I think she was overboard. That was unnecessary for her to buy that many things. But in hindsight, I think some of the things were necessary and it made life really easy for her, especially when she was living away from home. There's a fine line between saving money and investing. Now, I wasn't working. I wasn't earning anything of my own, so I wasn't saving my own money. I was just trying not to spend my mother's money. Investing is only considered investing when it's something that makes life better for you. Coming to UK to study without a scholarship in itself is an investment. It's an investment in my own future. I also bought laptops and expensive phones and you know smartphones and all of those things, those basic common things. I did all of those things. I'm not saying no, but it's just beyond that. I didn't think beyond it at all. When I look at the way I spend money today, I've come a long way from how I was 12 years ago. Number one, I am financially far more stable now, for sure. Number two, I'm older, so a bit more wiser, I want to think. I look at things as an investment. 
but it's not an investment when you just spend and buy random things investment is only considered an investment when it plays its part in the long run it's something to develop you something to make you grow something to help you grow and achieve beyond your own means achieve something that you have had your eye on or you plan something with a long-term goal those are my two biggest regrets not being bold enough to explore or to do things that i've never done before and not investing in something investment is not so much of a problem but not being bold enough in the past when i was younger is something that i still think about i still regret it sometimes when i think of something i feel like had i only been a bit more different had i been a bit more open to opportunities had i been a bit more open to doing different things or trying out different things I would have been in an entirely different place now. Because I have those two big regrets, I always try and think out of the box now. I always tell myself that I've got nothing to lose if I try something. What's the worst that could happen? People will probably laugh at you, you may not succeed in what you're trying, but that's a goal. To try something that you've never done, to think out of the box, to step out of your own circle. Although I keep having these thoughts that I could have been in a different place had I been bolder when I was younger, that doesn't stop me from doing things now. Age is but a number. Whether you start at 20 and achieve something at 30 or whether you start at 30 and achieve something at 40, the goal is to achieve something. The goal is to move forward and the goal ultimately is to be beyond yourself. The goal is not to achieve something by 20 or by 30. It is not your age that restricts you. It's not your age that decides what you do and what you shouldn't do or can or cannot do. I finally come to realize that I need to take a bold step forward. I have to let go of my reservations and my concerns about a lot of things. Just take a step forward one step at a time and that's what will help you move and that's what will keep you going. If you want to achieve something, you need to invest something and you need to sacrifice something. It's like the parable in the Bible, you can't reap something that you have not sown. If you're watching this right now and you feel like you are probably in the same shoes that I was in about 10 years ago, then I hope this helps you out. You need to invest in yourself, you need to put the time, you need to put that effort. But most of all, I want to encourage you to take the bold step forward. If you're used to doing things within your own circle or you're used to something that is comfortable to you, that is familiar to you, take one step at a time. Just put in 10% out of your 100. You don't need to go all the way out. Try a little bit. If you can't speak to your neighbor, make an attempt to speak to your neighbor. You just need to start somewhere. That's one way to start something, somewhere. It's really not nice to live all these years and then think back, look back at your life and regret how you have lived or regret missing an opportunity. Achievement of any sort always requires an investment. It could be time, it could be money, or it could be effort. Or it could be a combination of all three. Failing after attempting to do something is not as big a regret as it is from not achieving anything at all. I really hope you're able to look at your life and examine your life in every angle possible and take a step towards your own freedom. And I really hope that you are able to invest in yourself and in the things that you need to be able to move forward and do something for yourself and for your family. That's all I wanted to talk about today. I hope it resonated with you to some degree and I hope you're able to do something after this. Just take a bold step forward. Just do it. Just do it. There's nothing that could go wrong that you would regret rather than regretting for the rest of your life not doing anything at all. I wish you nothing but the best to achieve the things that you want to. May you always be bold to take a step forward. May you always be bold to do something differently. And may you always be bold to stand up for yourself. Bye. See you again next week. Mm-hmm.